Before we set out to do an example um, of Stokes flow, um, let me remind you that we first saw that the inertial scaling, inertial scaling, that leads to the um, Euler equations for inviscid so for inviscid regions of a flow when assuming Reynolds number goes to infinity and from that we deduced the famous Bernoulli equation so there Newly equation. The fact that we got rid of the viscous term allowed us to write the advection term, um, put it under a gradient, and then we integrated the full gradient, and that gave us the balance between um, kinetic pressure and um, um, height or gravitational forces um, as a um, uh, equal to a constant. Um, now we're doing the, um, we're going to look at the viscous scaling, viscous scaling, and that gave us the Stokes equations, and those were div u is equal to zero, and del squared u, u del squared u equal grad p in dimensional um, in dimensional form. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now these equations um, here are linear and then we can use superposition etc. However, we need to put, before we start getting into doing some solutions of Stokes flow, we need to um, still reduce this a little bit because the challenge here is that we have a pressure and without knowledge of the pressure, it will be practically impossible to integrate um, these equations. So um, today I'm going to introduce to you the uh, stream function, the concept of the stream function. Okay, so let's um, do stream function. Stream function. So consider, consider 2D steady incompressible constant density flows, incompressible flow, and then the condition div u equals zero is simply du by dx plus dv by dy equal zero. Now, when you think about these equations, there's as many equations as there are unknowns, however, they're just untractable. So it would be nice if we can reduce the number of unknowns here, u and v, to a single unknown. And, you know, if you can assume that u is some function of a continuous function psi, that will be known as the stream function, but we're not going to call it the stream function yet. We will prove that it is related to the, to, um, to the streamlines. And if v is equal to some g of psi, then we can show that if u is equal to d psi by dy, Remember, C is continuous and differentiable, and V is equal to minus D C by DX. If we substitute, what do we get? D by DX, so substitute these guys into the continuity equation. We get D by DX, D C by DY, minus D by DY, D C by DX, equal to then because psi is continuous, we can swap derivatives and then we get d2 psi by dx dy minus d2 psi by dx dy, and that is equal to zero. Indeed, it is equal to zero. So if you choose psi such that u is d psi dy and v equal minus d psi dx, you are automatically satisfying the continuity equation. So that's good, then we've kind of knocked out one of the equations in our system. Um, we can substitute Psi into this equation, but we'll do that later because we still need to eliminate the pressure. Um, however, however, there are some properties about uh, for the stream function. So let's look at those. Properties of the stream function. Properties of 
the stream function. The first property of the stream function is that C equal constant along a streamline. That's why we really call it a stream function because it is tightly related to the streamline. It just assigns a value to the streamline. So if you think of a flow, we have a bunch of streamlines in a flow. Okay, you have a bunch of streamlines like this, maybe like that. Um, each one of those streamlines has a value, C1, C2, C3, C4, etc. So now let's prove that C is constant along a streamline. So I'm going to consider a very large, I'm going to magnify a streamline over here. I'm going to pick a point P, X, Y, and at that P we have a velocity that is tangent to the streamline. Okay, I'm gonna magnify and exaggerate. That is the velocity v at that point. And we can decompose this into an x component and a y component. So this would be u and this would be v. Now, at that point, if you take an infinitesimal step to a point P1 x plus delta x and so x plus delta x or dx and y plus dy, then you can show that simply by analogy of triangles. If you move to a point um, delta x and delta y, so dx, dy, just by analogy, you can show that dy by dx, so parallel triangles, is equal to v over u, and the limit as delta x and delta y approach zero, and the limit of p1 approaching p2. So this implies that u dy is equal to v dx, and really that u dy minus v dx is equal to zero. Okay, so that's, in other words, the equation of a streamline, if you want, okay? V is a vector over here, okay? Okay, so what can we do with this? Well, let's substitute, let us substitute, substitute definition of C. Then we have, for U, remember U was equal to deep C by dy and v was equal to minus deep c by dx. So what do we get from this equation? We get the deep c by dy dy minus times minus plus so deep c by dx dx is equal to zero. Now what is this quantity? If c is continuous, c is continuous, then deep C, the total derivative, total change of C along a streamline, remember we're still on a streamline, is equal to deep C by dx dx plus deep C by dy dy. And according to that equation, that's equal to zero. And therefore, deep C is equal to zero along a streamline. And therefore, C is equal to a constant along streamline S. Okay, that's a really great result, and that's partly why we call this the stream function. Now, a second property of the stream function has to do with the flow rate. Flow rate is equal difference between two stream function values. So if you take two streamlines separated by an infinitesimal distance, C2 and C1 over here, I was going 
that direction. And then you say you want to calculate the volume flow rate between these two points, okay, A and B. So there is DQ coming in here. Then if you take a control volume and do a simple balance, if this is delta Y and this is delta X, then the flow coming out of here is U times delta Y times unit depth, and the flow coming out here is minus V times delta X times unit depth. And therefore, you could say that DQ is equal to U dy minus V dx, okay? But what is U dy minus V dx? That's equal to deep C by dy dy plus deep C by dx dx, and that's nothing more than deep C. So the change in Q from this point to that point, or the differential flow rate between these two points because of the flow field, is equal to the change in C from this streamline to that streamline. And therefore, the flow rate between any streamlines, Q, which is equal to integral dQ, that's equal to integral to deep C between C1 and C2, and that's simply the difference between values C, C2 and C1. And the sign of this difference tells you whether the flow is going from left to right or right to left. But what's important is the difference between the values of two streamlines rather than their absolute values. It doesn't matter. These could be just up to an additive constant, but that constant um, will subtract out once you take the difference between two streamlines. And that gives you the, the flow rate per unit length, really, because the units of C um, are equal to meter squared per second. How do you get that? U is deep C by dx. So units of U meters per second are equal to units of C over meters. So units of C are meters squared per second. And so that's volume flow rate per unit length. In this case, right, we had the, um, um, we had the depth um, assumed to be unity. Um, so anyway, that introduces the stream function. Next, we're going to take this concept that simplifies, reduces the velocity field in 2D to a single variable and plug that back into the Stokes equation and see what we can do um, with that.